Hey everyone, a little video I thought I'd do to show off my little transistor tester that I just finished building. Um, it's based on the, well it is, the AVR transistor tester from the German guy, I can't remember his name, sorry. But um, it was listed on um, Dangerous Prototypes the last couple of weeks. And I thought, oh that's a handy little thing to have. And uh, I had all the parts in my junk box. I actually had an 80 Mega 8 sitting in my uh, SMD and actually... Um, my uh, microcontroller box for a while and going, what the heck am I going to do with it? Um, and then came along and went, ah, oh, perfect, I can use it. <laughs> so anyway, so I made a, uh, got a Hammond case I bought from um, Rockby for cheap, and I made a nice front panel for it, which if I press the start button you'll see, it's uh, no, no or unknown damaged part, there's nothing plugged in. Um, I made a CNC front panel for it and um, using a nice expensive NKK switch because I literally have like hundreds of them and um, I hadn't, it's got a nice LCD that I got from um, JCAR but unfortunately it seems to be uh, have a dead backlight and I can't get it to work anymore so I'm going to have to replace that it was dead from, dead from the box anyway, let's stick a part in so I've got a, what's this, it's a PN100 transistor so if I just plug it in to the machine pads, pins on the end here which I've actually got um, I've done that for a reason I'll show you anyway, so press the button and it goes oh it's an NPN and the base is 2, collector is 1 and the emitter is 3 HFE is 526 and UF is 7 AM don't know what all that means yet, HFE I understand what it is um, but that's dependent on voltage so I don't know what it's basing that on but um, I have no idea what UF is, I'm guessing someone could tell me but anyway, um, the main thing I want it for is the base collector emitter and uh, what type of transistor it is. Anyway, that's a PN100. And if we plug in a, a JFET, which JFETs are kind of a bit tricky. It can't actually tell um, which one's the uh, source or drain. So it just says GDS132, which actually, if you plug it back to front, it gives you <laughs> basically the same numbers because it, it can't tell. Anyway, it says it's a JFET, which is kind of handy. Um, there's another JFET. Let's plug this one. This is a J310. That was a MPF102, the last one. And this one's a J310. Yeah, as expected. And then this is a 2N7000, which is just a generic little MOSFET. Which I'm going to plug it in. It's hard to do with the camera, though. There we go. Any MOSFET GDS213 VT2505. If I spin that round, so it's 213 GDS, if I turn it around, it should be the other way around. There we go. It should be 231, which is what you expect. Uh, okay, and then we'll try standard old MPN. Well, actually, I actually think this is a PMP. Good old, what's this? Uh, BC559. So, yep. And then we have an MPS. MPS A18. Uh, what's it? NPN. Blah, blah, blah. And then we can go on the big boys, which I won't jam them in the sockets because I don't want to run the sockets, so I'll just hold it there, which is good enough. Uh, NPN HFE 0 I think this is a Darlington I don't know I don't think it can uh, yeah it's a Darlington and this is, I think is a MOSFET I just randomly grabbed some things out of my box oh uh, I moved it <laughs> yeah it wasn't quite finished testing here we go try that again yeah MOSFET if I flip that around as well. Okay, drain or whatever should suit switch as well. Yeah, one, two, three, yep. And funky, check this out. If I get a LED and plug it into any two pins, like so, and then hit the button, you'll see it blink as it tests. And I'll say it's a diode. Anodes on two, cathodes on three. And that looks right. If I flip it around the other way around. As you'd expect, it should go 
Cathode is 3, cathode is 2. Amazing. And what's also funky is if I grab a resistor. Now I haven't actually put the right firmware in that um, my LCD doesn't have the required characters for ohms and stuff, so there'll be a random garbage character there because it's um I haven't uplo uploaded the right firmware but that has its custom characters installed. But anyway, um put a I think it's a 10k resistor. Hit the button and it says 10k. Well, pretty close. The resistors are fairly accurate, but the capacitors, which is about to try now, it says you, you shouldn't really rely on it. It just sort of gives you a ballpark, which is it's, it's not too bad. So that's 100 nanofarad, and it's, yeah, 95.89. So it gets you out of trouble if you really got stuck. Going, what the heck is that thing? It's probably more useful for magnitude more than anything. So this is bigger than the other one. Um, as you can see, it powers off itself after a couple of seconds. If you hold the power, if you hold the button down too long, it'll whinge at you saying time out and then it'll turn itself off. The actual um, power off function is quite funky. It uses a normal 7805L voltage regulator which is being turned on and off by a, uh, a BC557 PNP transistor. So basically when it's off um, the PNP transistor is not conducting so it's drawing you know, like 3 microamps so the 9 volt battery in this thing should last forever. Um, and then when you press the button you pull the base and that turns the transistor on, which turns the regulator on, which turns on the micro, which the micro's very first thing it does when it powers up is to turn on another transistor which holds low on the base so it stays on and then when it finishes doing its little test um, it gets to the end and it lets the watchdog timer time out after a couple of seconds. Um, actually I think it has a loop. Um, it's all in German so I can't really, I haven't <laughs> really gone too deeply into code. Um, but eventually it times out and then it turns the uh, the power on pin to low and of course turns it off and the transistor turns off and so the regulator gets turned off and everything's turned off. Um, it's quite funky actually. Um, yeah, so I'm just powering the backlight and the, thing, the whole thing draws about uh, less than uh, 15 milliamps, I think it was running 18 milliamps. Um, the LEDs are the most expensive thing. Um, I haven't, as I said, I, can't, I haven't got the full power because the um, backlight's not working, so there's about t 8 or 12 LEDs in the back of this LCD. I pulled it apart trying to figure out what was wrong, but of course I couldn't find it. So anyway, I'll just sweep those out of the way, and I'll get a screwdriver. This one here, and I'll just put them to the lid. Uh, it took a little while to get going, not because of any design problem, because of my own idiocy. Um, I forgot that um, when you program an AVR, um, when it uses the EEPROM, it's actually a separate file. It's an EEP file, and I just when I wrote my make file, I just completely forgot about giving the EEP file to um, AVR dude so that he, um, it would upload the EEPROM. So when I was starting pressing the button, I was just getting rows of garbage. And then because it was a null terminated string, it was expecting it to just go and let it lock up and crash. And I'd get nothing on the screen. Well, I'd just get rubbish on the screen. I was like, something's wrong with the LCD. So I was fiddling around trying to get the 4-bit thingy. And I was plugging the logic analyzer. And I was looking at the crow and trying to figure out what the hell it was. And it's got a serial, software serial port output as well. Um, which I haven't actually put a socket on it for it. Because I don't think I really need it. Um, but then I blew up my... TTL um, to USB adapter trying to get it to work and then I got it to work and looked at what the output was and it was just random garbage <laughs> again I'm like oh what the hell's going on and then it sort of dawned on me when I was looking through the code I went hang on I think this is in um, the E problem and then I went oh hang on I haven't programmed that and then once I programmed it magically it all started working so anyways this is the guts of the thing um, all the magic's underneath the <laughs> underneath the board um, my volt battery on the side LCD, which I've actually socketed with machine pins. Thankfully, because um, now I can replace the LCD with one that actually has a backlight, or I can hack this one and make the backlight fit. Um, the PNP transistor, the 557, the, the LM7805 um, regulator, and then the two um, NPN transistors, one's for the button um, notification, so you can retest. So rather than timing it, you can press the button again and the micro will go, oh, okay, you want to run the test again. Um, so that's what triggers that. Um, and then there's the other NPN, which actually is the um, power on, power off 
um, thingy, and it has a, a small RC constant that just sort of delays the power off for a few microseconds or so, so that the AVR can sort of shut down a bit more cleanly, rather than just having its head shot by the power being turned off. Um, but yeah, all in all, the battery fits in there quite well. I won't take the board out because it's hard to undo the screws and things, but you can sort of see it sort of fits together. Um, the lid, lid's just, you know, I just cut the holes out with the, um, I didn't do it on the CNC machine because I couldn't be bothered running out the box, so I just did it with a nibbler, and then I just made the, the front panel on the CNC machine, and it fits quite neatly. Um, the, the actual um, button is raised up off the board so that it is level, so that if I ever put it in my kit bag, the actual button is flush, so you can't bump it, you actually have to push it in, which is kind of handy, so if it's on the bench, it won't it won't get bumped and flatten the battery, not that it stays on very long anyway. Um, so yeah, so, fun thing, worth a build. Um, I still fully don't understand, because I'm not really super duper VK2As, the two VK2ZAY up on transistors and stuff like he is. Um, so I don't understand all the HFE, blah 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 stuff, and it's got little diode symbols and things. I think it's because the diode protection inside the transistors is actually detecting that and going, oh, okay, there's a diode internally, um, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think it should be handy in the future, even just for some of the grad bag um, transistors that I've gotten over the years that I have no idea, uh, apart from looking up, trying to find data sheets for codes that don't exist anymore and trying to figure out. You know, which one's base and which one's a minute, which one's a collector, or even if it's a MOSFET or a JFET or whatever. But um, having this um, makes it a lot easier. Anyway, I'll keep this uh, fairly short, it's 12 minutes anyway. Um, so, yeah, thanks.